You know, uh, the last couple of weeks I've been uh, speaking uh, on or using 1 John 4. And again, I'm referencing it, but it's not the main text that for this morning. But 1 John 4 states that, My dear children, you belong to and you are from God and have defeated, overcome the Antichrist or the false teachers. And I've been really emphasizing that you come from God, you belong to God, right? We belong to God. Now, um, I, I was remembering about the, uh, how the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, and how that, you know, it's easy for us, for me, to see how they are God's chosen people. You know, you have Abraham who's called and he leaves his family and home and goes to a land that God had promised. And then you have Isaac, his son, and Jacob, his son, and Jacob having his sons, and they become the, the tribes of Israel and, uh, or the nation of Israel. And it's, you know, it's always been easy to, well, yeah, they're God's chosen people. But what about you? What about us? How are we God's chosen people? How is it that we belong to God? How is it that we are from God? And the reason I emphasize this is that whenever we have a place of security, when we have a place of stability, it's easy to stand, you know? It's easier to stand when we know we're standing on stable ground. If you uh, saw the um, damages of the hurricane, you know, and the tornadoes and things that have come through. Those houses are just, they're not even there. They're just rubble, just flattened. And we would see how that these houses are, are, are not used, cannot stand, withstand the winds. And it kind of reminds us of the, um, the house built on, Jesus talks about the wise man and the foolish man. The wise man built his house upon the rock. Foolish man built his house on the sand. And um, so that's why we never built, bought a house by the beach. <laughs> Just a joke. But anyhow, <laughs> that we find that the, 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 they built their houses and the same storm comes. The same storm comes to the one who's on the rock and the one who's on the sand. And we know that the, the house built on the sand did not have a stable foundation and it collapses. Well, in our life, there's always storms. Storms are going to come, and they're going to be various degrees. They're going to be various intensities. But whenever we know that we stand upon the rock, Jesus Christ, and, and that we belong to him, God, you know, through the scriptures and through Paul and through um, the, the New Testament, the writers of the Gospels, they let us know we have a firm foundation that cannot be shaken. The gates of hell cannot prevail against it that every evil force in the world cannot shake the foundation that we have in Jesus Christ. Now, we may question, we may doubt, but they cannot touch, they cannot destroy the foundation that is Christ. So in our lives, we then are recognizing where we stand, okay? Where do you stand? What, what is it that you stand upon? If we don't have Christ, then we're standing on our own. We're standing, basically, the scripture is saying we're standing on sand. If you ever stood on the sand at the beach, <laughs> what happens when the waves come in? Your feet just kind of keep sinking. <laughs> they just kind of keep sinking. And next thing you know, you're down to your calves and almost to your knees. And, and all you did was stand there. Well, imagine what happens in the intensity of the storms. And the violence of the storms and everything that comes and goes. And so when we stand without Christ, we're not really standing, we're sinking. And our whole life is about to sink. But in Christ, no matter what we do and how we do, we are, we are on the rock. Now, sometimes, whenever I think of that, I think of, okay, I'm going to go stand on the rock, okay? Now, the rock is there, in, you know, if you go out on the mountain or wherever and you stand on a rock, is the rock is kind of oblivious. <laughs> I'm standing on the rock and the rock is oblivious to who I am. You know, it, it doesn't know that I'm there, you know, but I know I'm standing there. 
Well, what happens whenever we are standing upon Christ is that God, Christ is telling us in the scriptures, you belong to me. And not only do you belong to me, you have come from me. Okay? So now we're like a tree that is anchored, anchored in the, in the, in the, the, the ground. Now, if you um, look at the trees that were in the storm, you, you see those storms, they're just, they're just broken off, they're twisted off, they're just knocked over. And they're flat just like the, uh, the um, homes are. There's only basically one tree that can stand in a hurricane and tornadoes, and it's a palm tree. And the reason that a palm tree can stand, you know, on Palm Sunday we'll be giving out palms and things, you know, you can, you can test this theory. You can't pull them apart. There's too many strands. There's strands of fiber that go through the palm leaf. There are strands of fiber that go through the tree itself. And there are strands of fiber that go down into the soil, down into the ground, so that the tree will bend, it will stretch, but it won't break. And and, in actuality, the more that that tree flexes, the stronger those strands become. So in our life, but when our, whenever we have those storms of life that come and go, we actually become stronger because we, we understand that our relationship with God is something that cannot be pulled apart. I belong to God. I am from God. You know, we may have come through our parents and through our mother, but we came from God. God knew us before there was ever the foundation of the earth. God knew us. He knew we would be here. He knew the events of our life. He knew the circumstance of our life. And he loves us. And he's been trying to tell us all of our lives I, that he loves us and that we are standing in our faith. And our faith is what is holding us And that God knows us, and he not only knows us, he has prepared us for the events that we are facing. Because he knows, (laughs) I know who you are, (laughs) you belong to me, and you are from God. Now, (laughs) sometimes uh, people would say, I know who you are, David, (laughs) you know. Uh, I've been attending in our 50th class reunion. Imagine that, 50 years. Ruth, did you ever have a 50th class reunion? About 20 years ago. Okay, I was just wondering. <laughs> Yours is this year. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, um, we, you know, we get together every month now. You know, and it's it's... Funny, it's kind of funny, you know, people say, well, I remember you. I don't remember you in school, you know. Uh, and, I was, and I know who you were. I knew who you are. And you're a preacher now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> so we would say, I know who you are. Well, sometimes we would say, we would think of that in a negative context. They knew, oh, they knew me then, huh? <laughs> they knew me back when? And, and the idea is God knows us entirely from the beginning to end. And it always amazed me that God knows me from before I was born until eternity. And he knows every failure that I will make in that entire life. Every sin that I will ever commit, every wrong, every selfish, every Anything that I've ever done, he knows it all, and he has never once turned his back on me now or when I was a child. Okay? Because he loves me that much. So God who knows all things doesn't allow the things that we do, have done, or will do to turn his back on us. Now, we still have to... (laughs) We still have to live our life and we're still accountable for our life. And, you know, we are the ones who will have to live our life and make the choices. God just knows what the choices are. I I liken it to, and I know I've used this illustration before, but you go into a banquet hall 
And there's a thousand places to sit down, okay? A thousand places to sit down. All the name tags are at each place, but they're turned face down. The name is down. Nobody knows whose name is there, where their name is. You go through the banquet hall and you pick a seat and you sit down. You turn the name tag over and your name is there. God knew you were going to pick that, but you had to make the choice. So in our life, God is the influence of the Holy Spirit. The influence of the Word is guiding our life. So we need to, as it were, I, I've been really trying to grasp this concept I belong to God. Okay? Now, it's more than just saying, in, in the, um, we were at Williamsburg, Virginia, and they talked about how that people, slaves, they, they didn't allow slaves, or they didn't permit, they actually did not permit slaves to be Christians. Okay? Because if they were Christians, they could appeal to other Christians to be set free because a Christian cannot be owned. So they would actually try and prevent that, but if a, a slave uh, had done something wrong and they appealed to the, um, and they were Christians, they would be branded on their, on their palm. They would be branded with a, a letter or a sign that they were free from their whatever they did wrong or was accused of, but they were set free of that and they, and they were branded for it, okay? So in our lives, Paul calls us, he calls himself a bond servant, meaning that a slave could say to their master, the master sets them free, okay? But the servant says, I choose to be in your service. I will receive your brand. Okay? That's a bond servant. I choose to be your servant. Paul says that we are bond servants of Christ. I choose to serve Christ. And his word is written on the forehead. His word is written on our hearts and engraved in our hearts that we belong to God. So I am a servant of Christ. I am a servant of the Most High God. So therefore, I belong to God because I have willfully said, God, I choose to serve you. I choose to serve you. And I ask you for forgiveness, and that's how I am received into the kingdom of God by his forgiveness, and now I become his child, I become his servant, I become part of the body of Christ, I become the image of God. You know, there's all these things that go along with this belonging to Christ. But not only that, but every promise that God has given us in the scripture now belongs to me. It belongs to me. That my, my father is wealthy. How about yours? <laughs> yes. Your God owns, the, your father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. All the gold and the silver of the earth belong to God. That, that belongs to God. And so we just have to pray and ask him to transfer into our account. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> okay, God, I'll give you my, it's like you ever you go to the bank and if I know someone, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll tell them, you know, if you're short on deposit slips, I'll loan you one. <laughs> you know, and nobody ever takes me up on it. <laughs> but if you're sore, short on a deposit slip, let me give you one. You know, in our life, God is saying that he is depositing his love. Okay, I belong to God. I am from God. Now, we have this in 1 John 4, but in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 21 Isaiah is saying the same thing to the people of Israel. He says, people of Jacob, remember these things. All right, now, it's funny. If, if you follow this verse, and I'll go to the next verse, it says, 
People of Jacob, remember these things. People of Israel, remember you are my servants. Now, Jacob and Israel are the same guy. <laughs> okay? So Jacob, the one that is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob is the third from a Abraham, but Jacob's name is changed from deceiver to Israel because now he's a father, you know, he's blessed of God, and he has sons that become the nation of Israel, the, the tribes of Israel. So Isaiah is summon, summonsing, summon, he's letting the people know. <laughs> he's summoning the, all the descendants of, of, of Jacob, the descendants of, of Israel, all the people of Jewish faith, Jewish descent, he's summonsing them all, remember these things, okay? Remember these things. He says it twice. Remember this. Did you ever tell, try to get somebody's attention? Um, remember this. <laughs> remember this. What? Remember this. <laughs> Why? Because it's important. And Isaiah is saying this to the children of Israel. He says, remember this. Remember, you are my servant. Now, servant, we would think, okay, servant means God owns us. Yeah. Well, in this case, we're looking back. God called them. God has demonstrated his love through them. He has demonstrated his power through the nation. He had brought them out of Egypt through the Red Sea. And I always, you know, and whenever I think of um, that particular situation where God calls Israel, you know, to, you know, the 12, the plagues and the 10, the, the ten plagues in the, on Egypt and how that they get to the Red Sea and, you know, God opens it up and the Pharaoh goes in. and fall. You see, God dealt with Egypt a blow that they, could, they would never recuperate from. Had the armies of the Pharaoh of Egypt survived, they would have harassed Israel through the desert for the rest of their lives, trying to capture them. But in one moment of time, in the greed of, a, of, a, of the nation of Egypt, God dealt with that greed and that um, desire to enslave people he dealt with it in one blow and they would never harass that, the nation of Israel again until many years later. But at that moment of time, they were set free from the bondages of their encampment, their enslavement. In our lives, as servants of God, we walk through the difficulties of our life knowing that the things that would pursue us, the things of our past, our failures, our sins, they're collapsed upon and destroyed. They will never be remembered against us again. They can never fight us again. Our failures can never rise up again. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. People of Israel, remember, you are my servants. I think of Joshua. He says, it's time for us to decide. When you're going in the promised land, time for us to decide. As far as it is between, for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Me and my household. Rahab, <laughs> Jericho, anyone, everyone that's in your house will be saved from the destruction of Jericho. As far as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will bring everybody in. We'll bring everybody in. We'll get them all in there. While they don't want to come, doesn't matter, we pray for them. <laughs> the bondage is the things that keep them from coming, they'll fall off. All right. You are my servants, made, shaped, formed. You are my servants that God, that I made and shaped and formed you. I formed you. All right, going back to 1 John. I belong to God, I am from God, and God says to Israel, I formed you. I formed you. 
Jeremiah says, while you were yet in your mother's womb, I knew you. I formed you. You don't like the way you look? Take it up with the guy. <laughs> Take it up with Ancestry.com. <laughs> Go back and ball out the answers. But anyhow, I made you, I formed you, and you are my servants. Remember, remember, you are my servants. Remember, I formed you. Remember, I shaped you. Remember, you are my servants. As my servant, you're protected. You're protected. You know, in those fires um, out west, in the, I think it was, in, it was either in California or in Colorado where those fires were going on, they, they came across the, after the fire had gone through and died out, you know, had been put out. They, the, the guy came across one of this, like this little pyramid of a shape that was there, kind of like a bird. And he kicked it over, and out from underneath the bird were all these little chicks. The mother had gathered all of her little chicks under her wings, and herself was scorched and died in the fire, but all of her little chicks survived. As God's children, we are under his protection. We are his servant. And that we are not only, we are a bond servant, and that means we are free to make a choice, and that Jesus has told us, what is mine is yours. Now, Take that for a moment. What belongs to God belongs to us. Now, <laughs> we often think of things, but there are more than just things. There are spiritual realities that belong to us. The spiritual reality, the spiritual reality of eternal life. We were talking to some people yesterday no, it was Friday. <clears throat> we went to one of these presentations, you know, get free days, free. That's a long story. Don't, want to, don't, don't ever go there if you don't want to. But you've got to go there with the knowledge of saying no to everything they offer, no matter how good it sounds, because you're going to be ring, signed up for things that last the rest of your life and the rest of your children's life. So don't sign up for those timeshare things. But we did it to get free nights and stuff, you know. <laughs> So anyhow, I was the the, peop, the the individual who was the presenter was a young girl who was same age as Rachel, and you know, I was I, everything she said. I said, really, I can't do that. I said, you're beautiful, but I can't do that. And I said, God loves you, but I can't do that. And I and I constantly was just you know, telling her about God. And, and she said, at the end of the day, she said, it has been the biggest delight of my life to be with you. I said, you didn't make a dime off of this one. She said, I don't care. <laughs> it was a big, it was a delight to meet you. I said, I don't know how delightful it was. I said, the, my wife and I, we have a strange and wonderful relationship. <laughs> I'm strange, she's wonderful. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, we have this, this, you know, and so the lady, you know, we are God's servant no matter where we are at. We are his, and God uses us in these ways. And you see, he says to Israel, he says to the nations, I made you. And the words in the, in the um, expanded version says, I shaped you, I formed you. So you are who you are not by accident. Okay? You are who you are, and it's not an accident. It wasn't just God in the New Testament, not by the will of man, not by the will of a man or a woman, not by the will of man, but by the will of God. You are not an accident. And that who you are, your personality, your quirks, <laughs> your little things that make you you, your good things that nobody else has, they are all set there for a purpose and we are not called upon to try and 
be somebody different. We're called upon to be who we are inside out. And that God is the one who formed us and he then will give to us what is necessary by his spirit and his word to pick up the shortcomings, to shore up the things that would seemingly we want to do and yet just can't quite get there. All right? He goes on to say, I made you, shaped you, formed you. You are my servants. Israel, I will not forget you. I will not forget you. I came from God. I belong to God. God says to us, I will not forget you. I will not forget you. Isaiah 49, 16 says, Say, See, I have written, I have engraved your name on the palm of my hand. How many names can you get on your palm of your hand? <laughs> well, God can write every one of his children on his palm of his hand. He will not forget us. 2 Timothy 2, 19 says, God's strong foundation continues to stand. It is sealed. It is engraved with these words. The Lord knows those who belong to him. God knows who you are. He knows whose you are. And he loves you and he made you and he formed you and he plants us on the solid ground. Christ Jesus. That can never be shaken. Now, do you remember... Sequoias, the trees throughout west, the huge ones, they weigh thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of pounds. They're huge. What keeps them from just falling over or just pushing themselves down in the ground? Anybody remember? The root system. The root system of a sequoia is only about 8 to 12 feet deep. Okay? That's all the deeper they are. That tree that is up there hundreds of feet has a root system that is only about 10 to 12, 8 to 12 feet deep, but it spans out through the whole forest. So they are a platform of roots. And if you put a, a, a die in the, end of the, other, the uh, farthest out tree root system, it can work its way eventually right into the middle. You see, we are rooted and grounded in Christ. Beneath us is a foundation that we are anchored to that nothing can topple and nothing can take, rip it out. They can't go through and rip out the root system of a sequoia because it is so entangled in the roots of others, that's what keeps it stable. And you think, you know, in our church, we are encountered in Christ and we are, it's what keeps the stability of our life is our relationship with Jesus and our relationship with others. We keep feeding our soul and we keep feeding our lives and it nourishes us and it goes through the root system and you nourish somebody else's life. You are the light in somebody else's life. You are the opportunity that people have been looking for to meet Jesus even if they are trying to sell you a plan that's going to take you for the rest of your life to pay for, <laughs> and your children. But you are their light at that moment. And then verse 22. It's a good thing this isn't, I'm, doing, I'm not doing 10 verses, right? Verse 22. I have swept away. I have removed I've blotted out your sins, your offenses, your transgressions, like a big cloud. Remember all those things you used to get in the way? I have removed them like a big cloud. What happens on a cloudy day? You see one big cloud in the sky. Where does it go? Wind blows it away, dissipates into the atmosphere. 
And God, that's what he uses. Isaiah is using this as an illustration of how that God has dealt with all those things that we have done wrong in our life. They're forgiven. And God says, it's like a cloud. I just blew it away. <laughs> People say preachers have a lot of hot air. <laughs> God just blows away the cloud, blows away those things that are wrong with our life. So you see, the things that we, that we hold out in front of us or drag along behind us, God is telling us, let them go. You belong to me. They don't belong to you. I've taken them away. The failures, the sins, don't let them go. What else does he say? I've swept them away. I've removed them. I have removed your sins like a cloud that disappears into the air. Come back to me because I saved. I redeemed you. I have saved you. <laughs> I've saved you. Past tense. What Jesus did at the cross comes forward into our lives. He has saved us from our sin. The death of Jesus on the cross was so powerful, it went back in time to all those who were in Abraham's bosom, those who were in, that were believed in the Old Testament saints, they were all washed. They were, in the Old Testament system, the blood of the lambs and the sacrifice, they covered their sins. In Christ, their sins were removed. He led captivity captive. All those people he led out of paradise into heaven and went future to all those who will believe and confess their sins are forgiven. It goes forward in time to anyone who will believe and their sins will be forgiven. Not the will of God that any should perish. All should come to repentance. It is the will of God that everyone come and stand upon the rock. Christ Jesus. He knows your name. He knows all about you because you come from him. Came through your parents. You come from God. You belong to God. And he has shown his favor, his mercy upon your life. And the blessings that he wants to bestow upon us are greater than we can ever imagine. Because what he has for us is so far more than what we can ever ask or think. Remember, remember, remember these things. Remember, you are my servant. I will not forget you. I have swept away your sins like a cloud. I have scattered your, off your offenses like the morning mist. <laughs> You're mine. And nothing, you're written in my hand, and nothing can ever remove you from me. Amen? That wasn't good enough. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> you belong to God. Remember, you are from God. Remember, you are written in the hand of God. Remember, you are his forever. So do not let any sin, any past, present shortcoming get in the way of who you are in Christ. Let him blow it away like a cloud. Jesus, forgive us of our sins. Forgive me, O Lord. If I've sinned in thought, word, or deed, forgive me. The things that I've done wrong, God, you forgive and you restore us to the place that you hold for us in your hand and in your plan for our life. Thank you, God, for your blessing. May we not forget who we are, that we came from you. We belong to you. We are your servant. We are engraved on your hand. You will never forget us. Amen? God bless you. <laughs>